Hello, everyone. Please may I have your attention. We are about to start our ceremony. My name is Jervin Chanase. I'm a program officer monitoring and evaluation, working with the West African Civil Society Institute. It is my singular pleasure to welcome you today on behalf of my executive director, Nana Pajinu, and our partners, Wilder Hansen, as well as Innovation for Change to the official launch of the Alternative Funding Models online learning platform. I also want to use this opportunity to welcome all our distinguished partners and guest speakers who have come here to share their experience and past knowledge with us. For the next one hour, we'll be treated to three presentations. The first one will touch on the background and rationale for the Alternative Funding Models learning platform. The second one, will be an excursion into the platform to see what the platform offers and how we can navigate it. And then the last presentation would, the last presentation we are going to be introduced to the fundraising app that has been developed by our partners, Builder Hansen. Of course, we'd like to hear from you. So there'll be a question and answer session after each presentation. We may not be able to address all your questions given our share number but we hope to address majority of them. We are therefore entreating you to use the chat feature that you find either on the top or the bottom of your screen to post your discussions, your comments, your reactions. Please let's get interactive as we get along. In the chat box, you also find a Google form. Please use the Google form to fill in your questions, comments. We are hoping to harvest as much as possible so that we can use your comments and your feedbacks to generate a frequently asked questions segment that will be added to the learning platform. Please, let's ensure that our mics are muted. And for those of us who have just entered the room, we also want to rename our, uh, ourselves. For example, you may want to start with your name and then the name of your organization. So you can have, for example, you can have Jevin stroke Waxy, right? Please bear in mind that the session is being recorded and it's also being live streamed on our Facebook page. Without further ado, I'm going to, with your permission, I'm going to introduce our first guest speaker. He's in the person of Mr. Leon Banon. So Mr. Leon Banon has eight years of professional experience since experience in strengthening civil society groups across West Africa. He is currently the Capacity Development um, Program Officer at the West African Civil Society Institute, and he has been providing strategic support to leading West Africa civil society organizations, including CBOs and self-help groups aimed at building their robust citizen engagement informed and concerted social movements and systems towards the promotion of human rights, civil responsibility in West Africa. His main responsibilities include designing, planning, implementing, and monitoring capacity development programs for civil society organizations and community groups across West Africa. Leanne has been empowering citizens-led movements and civil societies in West Africa to become resilient, responsive, sustainable to be able to effectively play their role as strategic partners of holding the state and corporate actors to account in inclusive development. Leanne is also a certified advisor and a trainer for the Change the Game Academy. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, please let's welcome Mr. Banon to the virtual podium. Mr. Banon, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank, thanks so much, uh, Jervins, and thanks to colleagues for, for joining this platform and also actually joining it on time. We are, we, are, we, are, we are happy to have you here. I will quickly project my screen. Sorry, a second. Okay. Yes, I think that will do now. 
So um, my, my discussions, I think, as the chair said, I, I, I talked about the alternative funding model e-learning course that we are launching today. But more importantly, I'll be talking about uh, the context, rationale, and process leading up to the building up of the uh, e-learning course. So I will start uh, with the context. To, to, to just say that, I mean, we, we, we are back on this journey about three to three years, two to three years ago, when we started uh, our engagement or taking steps uh, around the development of this online course. And that's, that's, please let us mute our microphone, please. That was informed by the importance of the vital role of civil society organization representing citizen interests and aspirations in West Africa. And further to that, we have also noticed or witnessed uh, with the advent of democracy in Africa an unprecedented increase in number and influence of civil society organization across the continent. And that was mostly due to the failings of the state as well as the inefficiency of the market in Africa to improve the living conditions of the general populace of the citizen across the region. So civil society therefore stepped in to fill the vacuum and have become an active force and in service delivery and advocacy, especially in all the sectors, economic and social sectors of our life. And by doing that, civil society became a strong pillar of our societies and have been a force driving good governance, social change, and economic empowerment across the continent. However, we, we, we have noticed that despite their growth and importance, the sector is heavily dependent on external funding from mostly global north. And while also at the same time, we have also noticed uh, in recent years uh, a decrease of donor funding due to a shift of priority to more domestic issues and, and key to the well-being of their own communities. And that's, 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 that was also further exposed with the outbreak of the COVID-19 that, I mean, stressed the over-dependence of civil society organizations on external donors clearly demonstrated by various studies that was conducted in recent time. At the peak, for example, at the peak of the corona and, and around July to September 2020, WAPSI conducted a study uh, across the six Anglophone West African countries to basically uh, analyze the impact of the COVID on civil society organizations. And one of the key, uh, key results of, of, of that study was that 79% 79, 79 of the organizations engaged in the course of that study had no financial reserve at all. And a much more recent study that was released a few weeks ago by Tomenton, and that sought to interrogate basically how international funders can stop trapping their grantee into the starvation cycle. Also reveal that 50% of the organizations engaged in the course of the study had unrestricted reserve equivalent to less than a month of the annual expenditure. And that study covered both Africa, Asia, and Latin America. What does uh, this development tell us? It clearly tells us that civil society existence and viability is under threat across the continent. And therefore, trigger a renewed interest in and discourse around resourcing and financial sustainability uh, for civil society on the continent. But much more importantly, the need for civil society to respond to that challenge, that reality, through adaptations, experimentation, and exploitations of non-traditional approaches of resource mobilizations. It was within that context that WAXI, in collaboration with Innovation for Change, now known as Hub Africa, organized a shared learning convening on 
alternative funding model for CSO in 2018. That brought together organization from the various regions across the continent. And we would, I mean, that was made possible thanks to our collaboration with Innovation for Change. Most of the time, when Waxi, we congregate organizations, is basically region wide because we are a regional organization and engaging organizations from West Africa. But through the collaboration with Innovation for Change, we got representative not only for West, Western Africa, but also from Southern Africa, Eastern Africa, Northern Africa. At that meeting, there were about 30 civil society practitioners that have come together to reflect and share their non-traditional approach in resourcing their initiative and organization. It was also a platform for organizations to learn innovative tools uh, for resource mobilizations. And a key outcome of that convening was the development of a guidebook on alternative funding models. We, I mean, for some of you who have not seen it, we will share the link of that guidebook on the chat here. So a key outcome of that convening was the guidebook on alternative funding models. The guidebook lists out the various models uh, non-traditional models that organizations have tested, tried, and has worked across the continents. We have in total about 11 models that has been categorized in two major groups. We have internal resources. That means it will require organizations to leverage on their internal resources, including existing uh, skills, assets, uh, the structure of the organization and their member me membership base. And models falling under that, that category include consultancy services, asset building, event organizations, and social enterprise, among others. We have the second group of category that has the largest number of models. And that group requires organizations to leverage on external resources in implementing these models. We have this model includes microfinance, fiscal sponsorship, incubations, crowdfunding, social and green bonds, among others. We will have the opportunity in the next presentation to, to delve more into some of these models. Quite interestingly, the guidebook also includes organization financial sustainability checklist assessment to guide organization to do their self-assessment to basically ascertain and appreciate where they are on their journey towards financial sustainability or self-reliance. And that guidebook uh, serves as the basis of the development of the alternative funding model online course. Why so? We have noticed high tractions upon the release of the guidebooks, and that triggered the need for us to develop an online course to build the capacity of civil society or civil society practitioners, strengthen their skills knowledge on the know-how to implement the various models. And that was made possible through the general support of Wild Ganzen Foundations. And we are happy and excited today having you all joining this massively to launch, officially launch the alternative funding model for civil society in West Africa. The, the course is hosted on Moodle platform, user-friendly and very easy to navigate. We'll have the opportunity to go through that soon. But what I wanted to add is that the content approach and learnings that have been documented or highlighted on that platform have been tested, tried, and true to Africa continent and represent all the regions of the continent. And we are hoping that this will significantly contribute to the viability and sustainability of civil society operation and influence across the continent. And we are also hoping that all of you who are here today on the official launch of this platform are all ambassadors who help us spread the word, share this platform around, across to your partners, to your colleagues, but more importantly also 
register to the platform and take the courses. I would like to, 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 to also highlight that this initiative fall in line with existing initiative of WATSI in terms of contributing to civil society sustainabilities uh, in West Africa and beyond. Our journey of strengthening civil society sustainability started way back in 2012, where it started taking shape. And we recorded our first major milestone in 2015 with the release of the State of Civil Society Sustainability in Ghana. And that, that, that study contained also a civil society index for organizations to access the state of their sustainability. Fast forward in 2018, in collaboration with Star Ghana Foundation, the Institute embarked on a nationwide consultation across Ghana to develop the national civil society sustainability strategy, driving civil society beyond aid in Ghana. And that strategy provides key recommendation and action steps civil society in Ghana must take to, to, to strengthen their sustainability or guide them on their sustainability journey. Also, aside that, we have also developed an online directory of civil society organizations that is currently going through another revamping process. That online directory contains, is basically an online directory of civil society that contains the names, roles, missions, and contact details of all organizations from West Africa to basically promote collaboration network and visibility among these organization, but also between the organization and key partners or technical and financial partners. And, and furthermore, again, I mean, since 2018, we have also joined the Change the Game Academy as West Africa partners. We have been rolling out the Change the Game Academy, basically strengthening the domestic resource mobilization capacity of civil society in the region through face-to-face -face courses on local fundraising and as well as online courses. We also have an online platform that is available for civil society for country or community that we have not been able to reach yet to also take the course from the comfort of their office or rooms and at their own pace. And so basically, just to tell you that this e-learning uh, e course on alternative funding model align or fall in perfect rights uh, it's in terms of what the Institute have been doing over the years about strengthening the sustainability of civil society in the regions. And we are hoping this will not be the last initiative or the last tools that we are going to release. Working with you, listening to you, taking into consideration your needs and, 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 and your concern, we will continue to reflect together, design initiative and tool that will respond to those challenges and needs. I would like to end my presentation with a call to action that there is a need for us, civil society organization, to rethink our business models, think strategically about our financial models. And we are hoping that these tools that we are releasing, we are launching today, will help you in those reflections and give you skills, knowledge to guide you on that direction. However, we should also be mindful that in our journey for resilience and sustainability, we should not deviate or we should take, rather take into consideration, always take into consideration the causes we pursue for the benefit of our communities. Thank you all for joining this. Thank you all. And also thank you to, to Innovation for Change through which we were able to got to we are able to secure or get an uh, idea or initiative from all the region uh, 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 of, of Africa. We would like also to thank Wild Ganzen Foundation through their generous support. We were able to develop this online platform. 
we would like also to 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 thank colleagues from Waxi and and on my personal I mean uh, personal names to thank them for, for for the work they have done for working hard and tirelessly for making this possible and and releasing this tool for civil society across West Africa and beyond. Thank you so much, and over to you. Thank you, Leon, for that energetic, amazing, and illuminating presentation. I'm sure people have a lot of questions to ask. So at this point, we're going to take two sets of questions. Um, please kindly raise your hand so that we will nominate you. Please bear in mind that we are so many, so we cannot address all the questions. So we also encourage um, those questions that will not be addressed to use the chat box and post your questions there. We will try as much as possible to respond to them. So please, if you have a question, kindly raise your hand and then we would um, nominate you. So I see William. So William, Diary, I hope I got your name right. Kindly yeah, you are right. Okay, you have the floor. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, thank you very, very, sorry, very much, um, uh, Mr. Bannon. I believe I got your name very right. And uh, it's, uh, the presentation is very wonderful. So my question is this, uh, you know, uh, it is easy to say because I'm looking at how uh, we can be more practical uh, in getting funds for TSO in Africa. Because when you look at the whole things and the whole scenarios happening in Africa, you discover that it's very, very difficult to access funds. Now, with this platform right now, it, will there be a means or a medium by which as CSOs in Africa, we can access a fund as a group? That is one. Then number two, um, uh, how can we build this, um, uh, this um, uh, society in order for us to be able to revolutionize, number one, the agri system in Nigeria and in Africa. Number two, uh, to be able uh, to be in the forefront in uh, implementing uh, a solution for climate change. Because if you look at the scenario of Africa, no, uh, of what is happening in Africa, you discover that the, the heat of climate change is actually hitting on us. And it's a man-made uh, disaster. So we can find a solution for it. So, and we need funds. So is there any way we can come as a group or a medium by which we can access funds and be able to uh, get solution to some of our activities in Africa? Thank you. Okay, thank you for that question. So, Leon, it's at, I think we have some other. Would you want to take that question before we go to the other questions? We, I, I think I could take a couple of them together. Okay, all right. Um, well, we Alima Sagito, please, you have the floor. Uh, hello, good morning, everybody. Gavin, how are you? Fine, thank you. <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> I hope you can make my faith up, right? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, yeah, just to say thank you to Wasi for putting together and also to uh, the presenter for a good job done. Yeah, I just want to find out, I don't know, sorry if uh, I, did, I didn't hear that part, whether the course is uh, going to be paid for and how long that will go. Okay, thank you very much, yeah. Madam Alima. I think we have Charles by me. Please, I hope I got your name right. <laughs> yeah, good morning. I'm uh, Charles Baime from uh, Côte d'Ivoire. Uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, Leon, for, Leon and Waxi for, for this session. Uh, I, I was facing technical uh, issue with internet, so I, I just joined the, 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 the course now. But I get some few words at the end of uh, Leanne's presentation. And uh, my one is not a question. I think the, we have as a civil society 
organization, we have to think how we as a civil society organization, we, we, uh, we, we are working uh, seriously and um, uh, in the line of, uh, uh, I mean, in the line of uh, how we are building our redeemability uh, in face to the community also. Because the first things as civil society organization we have is our integrity. If we are working seriously and hardly, we will get, uh, I mean, support from many uh, um, uh, stakeholders or, or also from uh, Hello, uh, people. Yeah. I, think, Hello. I think this is a this is a point I want to highlight. Maybe uh, 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 Leon and others will put. Uh, uh, again on this uh, on this so thanks again and uh thank you to uh, to you all okay um thank you for that question we'll take two more questions i've seen jonah akufai uh, hello can you hear me yes jonah hello. we can hear you okay uh, thank you for your opportunity and thank, uh, thank Leandro for a wonderful presentation. I just want to ask if, uh, because he made mention of organization policies and what have you, uh, we've been to several, several trainings and they keep hammering on having the right policies in place in terms of federal financial policy, travel policy, um, procurement policy and all those kind of policies. So just, what I want to ask is that on the um, website he, he, he talks about, are there sample of those policies that civil society organization could actually adapt to suit their peculiar need? Thank you. Okay, Leon, please, would you like to respond to these questions before we take the second batch of questions? Thank you. Sure, thank you, David. I will start, I mean, with the first point at Williams. That raised, I mean, a concern, especially uh, about us also, civil society organizations, to promote ADRIC, I mean, to be much more self-sufficient when it comes to food. And I think that's, that's, that's a very good question, especially with what is ongoing now with the war uh, in, between Russia and Ukraine. That is also affecting, I mean, food, uh, food prices across the continent. But I mean, what I want to say about that is that and there is a need for us to, as civil society organization or actors, to come together and reflect, analyze, and strategize to respond to some of our local uh, challenges. Uh, most, most of our, for most of us, our intervention are much more activity centered. And also we are heavy on reporting. And we don't do much about uh, reflections, strategizing, and, 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 and basically, I mean, devising a solution to, to address our challenges, bring a space that will bring us together, various organizations, and also cross-national, actually. To, to respond to our local challenge. So we need to do that more. And we at Waxi, we have been deliberate on that over the last couple of years now, trying to bring uh, actors together to, to work on I mean, a specific thematic to reflect and, and, and come up with propositions, I mean, relevant recommendations to, to move forward. And we are hoping, we are hoping, for now we have not done anything about Adric, but why not? It could be Waxi. It could also be other organizations that we are hoping in the near future, or also, I mean, leveraging also on existing initiatives that will have much more deeper conversation about that, but also taking action in that direction. This next question from Alima, she asked about the price of the course. 
I think that's that's that was a point that the next presentation was meant to address. Uh, but just to answer that quickly, and she said, how long? For the how long, we will leave it for the next presentations. But the price, the cost is free. It's free for all organizations and practitioners. We, we make it free so that it will not, I mean, the cost or the price, putting a price to it will not be an impediment for civil society to take the cost. We know how uh, urgent is it for us to, to take actions in terms of responding to our financial sustainabilities. However, as a way, I mean, of ensuring the sustainability of the platform itself, we charge $20 for certificate. So you take the cost free, but if you want the certificate at the end, you have to pay $20 for that. And that's money, that resources that we collect through the certificate will serve to servicing the platform, for example, and renewing the server, updating re relevant functionalities, and so on and so forth. So, it's, I mean, it's, we cannot be talking about sustainability and not be sustainable ourselves. So, that's why we have added that element $20 for certificate. But the cost itself is free for anyone, anywhere to take it. I also saw a comment on the chat, someone asking that, can we from Eastern Africa also take the cost? Yes. Is free for any organization or practitioners from all over Africa. And the examples, the content, the objective reflect the, the, reflect the context of all the regions in Africa. We have taken a case study of organizations that of African-based organizations that have tried it across the continent, have tested and has worked that we have put it there. And also they are also relevant lessons that have also been documented alongside the, the, the various models that I hope you will enjoy going there forward. Now, the question, I mean, uh, Charles by may issue about uh, accountability spot on. I mean, there is a need for us to do more uh, in or inward accountability, be much more accountable to our constituencies. And that, that is an ongoing and I mean, discussions. And we are hoping that with this kind of initiative, when we start mobilizing resources at community levels, we will, that will also, I mean, drive us to be much more accountable to, to our constituencies. Now, the last questions uh, about policies, uh, actually, uh, I, I actually had a one segment of my presentation that was talking about step to be more sustainable, but at some point I removed it, I thought it was not relevant. But maybe in response to that question, I will present it here to say that, I mean, we, we have come up based on our work of strengthening civil society, financial sustainability. We have come up with this process to guide the organizations on their journey to become self-reliant. First steps to take, is to reorient staff and board members' mindset. So you need to do a shift of mindset, first thing. Secondly, and that is also very vital, is to set up robust and agile internal accountability systems. So for example, what we are doing for you to raise resources through non-traditional approach is you to build a reserve, a reserve that you can lean on in the case of, 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 of emergency or uh, any other issue that may come up, for example, the COVID outbreak, pandemic and so on and so forth, where you don't have inflow of resources, you can leverage on that. So, but for you leveraging on that reserve, you also need policy system and structure around it about how you are going to use it. I will not, maybe at this day, I may not mention specific policy, but what I want to say is that look at what works for you and based on the structure of your organizations, have a clear system about using those resources. You, we should not say because it's internal resources, we can do whatever we want with it. It should be, there should be a clear process about how to spend that money within the organization and for the good of the organization. And the next step is to develop the capacity of staff and members on different skills and competencies. And that is where we are coming in with this initiative to strengthen the capacity of staff and organization to implement these models. And, and, and that will lead to the promotions or adaptation experimentations. And the last one is to be deliberate and purpose. 
I mean, add purposefully in terms of a plan for sustainability as a core strategic objective at, at for our organizations. So, it's, I mean, Devin, that, that is it for the first round of okay. questions. Thank you. All right, thank you, Leon. We, so we have a number of hands raised up. Um, so I'll begin with um, Ekeni Owanwa. Owanum, please, you have the floor, Mr. Ekeni. Thank you so very much. Oh. My name is Ekene Onwanam uh, from Lagos, Nigeria. The two of the first questions uh, I plan asking, I think uh, Bano has attended to that. Then um, I'm adding on the policy area. Um, if actually we are looking towards this uh, um, uh, sustainability, I think it's important in the policy area to think of uh, a particular policy within the continent of Africa, that even when you're having a donor-funded project, there will be something like, um, uh, well, I call it a caveat, or, or in, the, in the funding part, that so, 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 so thing will be for the Organization for Sustainability. I don't know if there's any way we could get something like that as a policy in the continent of Africa, so that when you have um, a donor um, for your organization, out of the funding, they will put it into their own uh, budget that they're supposed to have something like this. Percent, 10 percent, 20 percent, or something, or five percent depends on the amount they are given. Or let's have it generally a five percent thing in uh, the bulk funding. I don't know how possible that would be. Okay, thank you, Madam McKenney, for that um, question. Um, and then they pass it. Please, you have the floor. Hi, Basi. Hello, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hi. Please, could you amplify your voice? Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. I am by name Mrs. Nene Basi, the president of Advocacy for Persons with Albinism Network, talking from Akwai, um, sorry, um, Nigeria. Um, I want to thank the forum for setting up this platform and the, the upcoming launching that we'll do any time from now. It's really an amazing one. I commend you all for your hard work. Thank you. Please, sir. The question I want to ask, um, the second speaker spoke and um, talked about issues on climate change. And then um, the first speaker spoke also on issues regarding policy. I want to ask, are there set policies for inclusivity? I mean, for inclusion for persons with disability in Africa or in other continents, seeing that the World Health Organization, the United Nations has incorporated persons with disability into most of their scheme of things. Is there any thematic area that are um, for persons with disability? Um, that's one. And two, for issues on climate change, the issues of climate change has really affected majorly um, persons with albinism, especially in the continents or countries that has to do with fossils. What are the steps that the CSOs have um, lined up to alleviate um, the menace in order to um, help persons with disability not to go on, um, sorry, persons with albinism not to go on complete extinct because this has really affected them as a result of their um, genetic disorder. So please, sir, I would want you to throw more light on that for us. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that. Please, I would, um, pleading with colleagues and everyone on the platform that let's stay within the scope and, and ask questions that are relevant and pertain to the discussions. So um, that's just a note to everyone. So I would like to call on Ambassador, 
How many from? Please, you have the floor. And your phone, thank you so much. Um, good day, everyone. Hello, can you hear me? Good day, everyone. Hello, yes, we can, can hear you. you. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, my name is um, yeah, Ambassador yeah, yeah. Comrade uh, Ambassador Comrade Nefono Dante Block from Aquaibom State, Nigeria, the founding president of Coalition of Nigerian Youth Light Movement, a member of ICANN and Civic World Alliance, and also a member of African Liberation Rising. I'm so much happy to be here today in this um, official launching of the alternative course for WASI members. And also, please, I want to ask this question because I've been trying to find difficulty in joining the, the, the Moodle app. I've um, been trying to log in and they'll be telling me some error, error, error. I don't know how you can help me to, you know, project me into that um, course. And moreover, I want to, I want to ask why is the course, you know, why is the course being free and the certificate being paid for? Because me as a- me now. Why is the course Hello, hello. Yes, please, hello, uh, please. Go ahead, please. Okay, because uh, I've been I've been attending some of these courses, um, courses of this kind, especially the one they just concluded with the Civic Course World Alliance, and um, you know everything for for all the alliance we made free, we made free the course um, free. They just set up it was around uh, the courses of from the Civic Course World Alliance was starting from me and it ended yesterday. So the course was free and the certificate was free, but I want to know why the one of WASI is um, and the course free, you know, it's very alternative that the course free and the certificate is being paid for. Can please can you throw more light for me? Thank you. All right, thank you. Leon, let's take one more question so that we'll close the, this round of questions from um, Benjamin Atakura. Thank you. Benjamin, please you have the floor. For those of us who are unable to speak on the platform, kindly post your questions, your comments on the chat in the chat box. We will try to respond to them. Benjamin, if your hand is raised, please, you have the floor. Okay. Hello, Benjamin. I think Benjamin is unable to join us to speak at this point. So Leanne, can you kindly respond to the question so that we'll move on to the next presentation? Thank you. Thank, thanks so much. And thanks to all colleagues for, for who have raised their hand and also have contributed. That's a clear sign of your interest in this uh, initiative. So I think, I mean, uh, uh, Ikele talked about, it's mostly a suggestion and recommendation for all of us that we need to adopt and stand on a very strong, I mean, negotiations power when we are engaging partners to also include elements about sustainability, especially when they are giving us funding and it's well noted for all of us. The issue about policy and all that, I think this may not be the platform for us to address all those issues. But I mean, it will be an ongoing conversation. We are hoping that we'll have other platforms that we can talk about those issues and at local, national, and regional levels. And why not also at continental levels? And at, at the last point about ambassador, why are we and paying you? Why is the cost free and certificate is paying for? Yes. Yes. Yes, they are paying for the certificate. And I mean, uh, the reasons is very simple. Is I mean, the money that we'll be getting or the resources that we'll be getting from that uh, certificate will serve at the servicing of the platform. Every year, every year, we need to renew the server that is hosting the course. We need to go through, we need to get a consultant to revise all the functionalities. And, and quite interestingly, I think we'll discuss that in the next sessions. There is a sub sessions in, on the platform that give opportunity to participants to share feedback about what they want us to improve further on the platform. What do they think that we can improve on the platform? And when this recommendation come up, we have to be able to address them. 
And that means get consultant, people who are knowledgeable, and instructional designer to address those issues and it's resources we need to pay for their time. So that resources we are secured through the certificate will help us to respond to those needs. So reason why we are charging for certificate, the cost itself is free. Unless you want, if you want a certificate, you pay $20 and in, within three weeks, you get your e-certificate. Otherwise the cost is free for anyone wherever they find themselves in Africa and beyond to participate in the course. So basically it's for the sustainability of the platform. That's why we are charging. We don't want a situation that after one year, we will go back to partners and say, please give us funding to renew our server. It means we are not applying what we are, I mean, I mean teaching people the message we are sending it across, that we ourselves, we are not yet sustainable in terms of managing the platforms. And it, it, it will be a sign of failure for us. So that's why we are charging. I think it's not much. It's $20 compared to other courses. There was also a comment on the chat sessions that were asking whether the certificate is accredited. I think that will be the next steps. We have, for example, the Change the Game platform that we'll be talking about it later, that we started, I mean, some years back. But I mean, fortunately, recently, we were able to accredit, I mean, link the certificate to a credible or accredited, I mean, body. For, for people also to use it on for other purposes. So this course is now we are launching it. So thank you for raising that. And we are hoping the coming month of the year will take steps. Why not to accredit the certificate? I mean to link it to the relevant body for, for, for other purposes. And, and those questions are much welcome. And we are taking note of all of them to see action that we need to take to respond to them. We will also share a survey with you that will help us form they frequently ask questions on the platform so that when people who are not here, when they go to the platform, they'll know that these were issues that you have already raised as first ambassador of the platform and we have addressed them and for them to go there and see the answer for the issues. So on that note, I'd like to thank you all. And again, stress on the need that we are all ambassadors of this initiative. It's not WAXI initiative, it's not Wild Gaza initiative, it's not innovation for change initiative, but it's for all of us, for civil society organization actors across Africa, for us. So wherever you are, please market it to your constituencies, to your partners, and, 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 and also to your colleagues for them to benefit from this initiative. Thank you all for your time. I'll give the floor to the chair for us to move to the next session. Thank you. All right, um, thank you, Leanne, for those brilliant remarks and um, comments. So I just want to announce that we have a slide change to our program. Our third speaker has an emergency, so she has asked that she presents uh, in place of the second presentation. So we want to take her presentation and then move the second presentation that we would have had to the last segment. Um, please, any inconvenience cause is deeply regretted. So our next presentation is coming from Nyanka Nuyens of Wilder Hansen. She's the program manager at Wilder Hansen. Um, she's a driven program manager and a coach. She's talented and agile and very good in organizing. She's also a very good motivator and the driving force behind new plans. She is resource-oriented, open-minded, and very responsible. She wishes to contribute to a fairer and a sustainable civil society. Her specialities include projects and program management, development of e-learning platforms, and coaching in the fields of youth care and international cooperation. Without further ado, please let's welcome Nyanka Nuyens. She will be delivering her presentation on a fundraising app that though the Hansen has developed. So let's welcome her. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gervin. Uh, uh, I have shared my screen. I hope you can see it. Yeah, we can yeah. see it. Perfect, thank you. Yeah, so thank you for that, uh, for that nice introduction. Uh, first, I would like to congratulate you. Um, uh, all of you uh, at Vaxi for uh, launching uh, the new course um, on alternative funding models. Um, this is a huge deal. It, it is a lot of work to develop good e-learning. And this is, uh, yeah, I've been privileged to, to already see it. It's very, very 
uh, good, a, a very solid course uh, with, with so much opportunities to learn and to uh, make your organization more sustainable. So um, yeah, congratulations on, um, on uh, being able to finish the course and uh, sharing it with, uh, with all of us today. Um, yeah, I, I, I just shortly wanted to, <laughs> to go back to the, the question of why alternative funding models are needed. Um, and, and this is something that, um, that we have been pairing up with Waxi uh, for the past four years, uh, looking at developments worldwide and see how we can um, uh, offer solutions for organizations to become more sustainable and to raise more local income. But why is that necessary? Um, yeah, we think there there are a lot of de developments, of course, stepping into that. But but for developments that are very <laughs> um, very urgent, is that um, yeah, that is the first picture you see a, a beautiful apartment complex next to uh, to uh, to an area where the housing is much <laughs> is in a much different uh, quality, um, reflecting that. Uh, in the current situation, in many in many uh, uh, countries, uh, very rich and very poor people live next to each other, um, and uh, that offers, of course, uh, a lot of possibilities for people uh, uh, to um, to raise funds locally, because there are a lot of uh, very wealthy pe wealthy people living in uh, middle income countries that are able to uh, contribute to uh, organizations such as yourself. Uh, also, we see a huge rise of middle class uh, in many countries uh, that also are able to contribute to uh, the good work organizations are doing. Um, yeah, the, the third picture really, um, I think, uh, stresses that uh, in many countries as well, uh, governments are restricting um, the civic space of organizations to speak out, um, the space of citizens to be who they are and uh, to, to speak their minds. Um, and local fundraising really uh, helps uh, to uh, make sure that the voice of uh, those people is being heard. Um, yeah, the, the fourth picture reflects what Leon also has been saying. Uh, money, uh, international donor money has been diminishing for years and years. Um, and it's very necessary that we look into other ways of raising money um, to make sure that the very important work you are all doing uh, can continue. Uh, so to summarize, it's time to shift the power and it's time for organizations uh, to tap into local fundraising, regional fundraising, alternative funding models. Um, yeah, and, and these are also very important developments that Waxi has been working on um, and uh, uh, has um, summarized and reflected in the local, uh, in the alternative funding model course. Um, but we also wanted to share that Waxi is part of the Change the Game Academy. Uh, Leon also pointed it out, uh, which um, has um, a, a lot of free online courses. One of them is the Waxi course, as you can see, number 12, Advancing Fund, Advanced Fundraising Techniques. Um, but the Waxi course is more elaborate and uh, has much, much more background materials. Um, so I would recommend you use that one. Um, and the Change the Game Academy um, has been into uh, effect since 2016 uh, in 14 countries uh, with classroom courses and uh, online courses. Um, and yeah, what I wanted to share with you as, as well today is that local fundraising and alternative funding models um, have been tried. And uh, it is truly possible, even in remote, poorer communities, organizations are able to raise local funds uh, through community fundraising, food fundraising with individuals, with um, 
corporations uh, and are hugely encouraged by the success of it. Um, and uh, what we also see is that the projects run by these organizations are much more sustainable and uh, are much more likely to continue on the long run. Uh, so all of these are very good reasons why this alternative funding model course is very important. And um, yeah, uh, I <laughs> would really encourage you to, uh, to start uh, on that course. Um, but what we've also um, uh, received as feedback over the years is that in some, for some organizations and for some uh, people, internet connectivity really is a problem. Um, and that internet can be either difficult or very expensive. Um, and with that in mind, uh, uh, Change the Game Academy, working with Waxi as well, uh, developed a, a, an app and um, a short summary of all of the classroom learning on the Change the Game Academy website, but um, made uh, very practical and um, accessible in an, uh, in an app, an online app on Android and on iPhone, uh, which you can download for free, uh, which has uh, which summarizes fundraising techniques, uh, tips to improve your local fundraising, tips to improve your communication, uh, five uh, examples of good fundraising messages, has video lessons, uh, resources, examples of fundraising activities, um, and can be downloaded once you have access to Wi-Fi and then um, be used uh, offline. So that might be handy next to going through the uh, alternative funding model course. Um, yeah, I wrote down the link here. I'll also put it in the chat um, for you to, to look at. Um, yeah, and I think that was my contribution for today. Um, I am uh, still here for some minutes. So if you have questions, please, um, I'm very happy to answer them. Uh, and then thank you also, Vaxi, for, uh, for shifting the priority today. I have to run to attend an, a, a family emergency. Um, but thank you so much for allowing me to speak here today and uh, sharing um, the, the information on uh, the Change Again Academy app, but also really stressing that the alternative fund, uh, funding models course yeah, I, I think it's amazing, Roxy, that you've been able to um, to capture all of this great knowledge, very practical knowledge as well. And uh, there's lots of examples and how tos, um, which uh, I hope can contribute to um, making your organizations more sustainable. Thank you so much. All right, thank you, Nianka, um, for that brilliant presentation. Um, we are happy that you can stay for a few more minutes. Um, people are asking if they will get a recording. So as we announced, the, we are live streaming the event so you can have access to it whenever you want on Facebook and we'll also try as much as possible to send you the recordings after the event. Um, we have a couple of people that have raised their hands. So the first is Mina Obanga. Please, you have the floor. Okay, hi everyone. It's going to take. It's going to really be real quick. Well done for everything going on. It was an initial question for the previous stand speaker on the on the strength of the certification. Is this certification going to be used for educational purposes? Can it be used for proper professional activities? And can it be used as a CV um, suitable or viable, um, you know, um, certificate? If you understand what I mean, it's um, less about purchasing it or not, the issue is the viability of this certificate. So someone can put it in, you know, as an accredited and certificate that can apply at um, different critical moments. Thank you. Thank you. The second question, um, we have Albert. Albert, please, you have the floor. Albert Mimo. Mimo. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Good morning. I want, to, I want to thank uh, the presenter for that information. 
my question here is that how best um, we can able to become a change, a change, uh, change, change the game academy because we have seen uh, in civil uh, society platforms it's a very really not easy for us to get um, this local local funding. So how best we can able to get this local funding? I want I want you to speak me through that. Um, Albert, please your your voice was a bit down. Can you be more audible? I'm not sure we got your question. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. I'm I'm trying to say, uh, how best we can able to tap to this local and funding because it's not really easy for us as a civil society to get this local funding in our communities in our society, except we depend on the international donors or um, partners. So I, I don't know how best we can able to tap to this local NGOs. I want I want the, the presenter to take me through in that again. Okay, thank you. Um, so okay. Leanne, would, would you like to take the first question and then maybe Bianca will attempt the second question. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Jervin. Uh, I think uh, for the first question, what I would say is that uh, at this stage, we have not uh, accredited the certificate to a specific body, but this could be or will be a step that will be taken in the next months or years because they also take a time for us to finalize that to be accredited. So I think I will consider as a recommendation and something we need to take into consideration. So the most important for oh, us at this you, stage is you, you, is you having the skills and using it and apply within your organization and community to, 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 to mobilize relevant resources and put your organization on the right pathway of sustainabilities. And, and, and also, I mean, make use of those skills wherever you find yourself. Uh, if you leave your organization any times. So that is the first purpose now, is to drive the financial sustainability of organizations. But that is well noted and, and, and we will take that in consideration moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Nianka, please, would you like to attempt to answer the second question? Yes, please. Yeah, so the question is, uh, as I understand it, um, how can we start with local fundraising? How actually uh, is it done and um, what, what can we do? Um, well, I, I think the steps that Leon um, uh, showed in the sheets um, really do uh, summarize the way to go. Um, aligning your organizational goals towards raising more local funds and really being um, uh, dedicated to make your organization less dependent on foreign funding. That is a very important first step. Uh, and then uh, gaining the skills and the knowledge and the, on, on local fundraising techniques, uh, that is the next step. And that is where Change the Game Academy and um, the, the Alternative Funding Model course uh, really uh, come at hand um, because there is a lot of practical knowledge in there and a lot of examples of successful uh, local fundraising techniques. So I think those might be very helpful uh, for you to get an idea on where to start and what would be really, um, what, what would fit your organization. Uh, for example, if you have a lot of knowledge on a very specific subject that is uh, quite in demand, uh, consultancy might really be a very good technique for you to start with. Um, so <laughs> that really depends on where your organization is, uh, which, fund, which fundraising technique is most appropriate. But I think um, if I'm correct, the next session will um, um, a tap into that <laughs> question as well, offering a bit of insight on the different uh, alternative funding techniques. So thank you for that question. Thank you, Nianka. Thank you for your time. So I think the ground has been set for us to zoom into our last and third presentation. Our, this presentation will touch on the platform and how the platform works and how we can navigate it. It will be delivered by Mr. Christian Ilonge.
Mr. Christian Ilonge is an educator, author, and managing partner of Cupboard Group. He provides professional solutions in knowledge management, e-learning, and translation for local and international businesses and development agencies, such as Civicus, UNESCO, European Union, International Finance Corporation, that is the IFC, the African Union, among others. He's also the executive director of Muna Kalati and the chairman of the International Network for the Promotion of Arts and Speech in Africa, RIPAL. Prior to this, he worked as the Knowledge Management Program Officer for the West African Civil Society Institute. As an Ashoka Fellow, he worked tirelessly with Africa-oriented prof professionals and international brands on social impact projects that have benefited over 9,000 students and professionals across West and Central Africa. He has several globally acclaimed publications on education and technology, serious games, civic space, and learning recovery. As an avid lifelong learner, he holds three master's degrees in management of cultural industries, instructional design, and in African studies, with more than 43 international certifications from global studies. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Mr. Ilongi. Thank you so much, Jervin. Uh, it's a pleasure being here. I hope we are all able to hear me clearly. Here is Christian Ilongi. And uh, I'm going to basically do a brief presentation about what to expect and what to receive from the platform, which is actually uh, a model platform. So I will really require the attention of everyone so that we can go through the process and know how to tap and get the best out of this platform. So I'm going to project my screen to make that possible. And I'm going to show us the various steps that one has to undertake in order to start the course and complete it su successfully. So I hope, are we all able to see my screen, please? Yes, 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 we can see. Fantastic. So, yes, we can see it. Okay, fantastic. So once you register on the course, you know, you are going to have access to it and come. Let me start. So the address to the course now is model waxy.model.cloud. When you type it, you will come to this page. You type the address works.model, you, you will see the course here, and you click on alternative funding model for C society in Africa. You only have access to this if you have registered to the platform. And once you are in, as you can see, everything is properly structured. You will be able to see, you know, the general element. The general element are everything that you need in order to prepare before starting the course. So there is the forum. In the forum, this is where you are going to receive announcement about every update concerning the course. So every beginning of week, all those who are registering the platform will receive updates about what's, what's going, the new module that have been released, and anything that happens around the course, live chat, live webinar around the course. This is where you are going to find the information. We also have a space for course and community guidelines. This has basically rules that will enable you to move through the course in a smooth way, respecting other participants and engaging with them in order to have the best out of the course. So these rules, once you enter the course, you have to abide by them because we want a safe space for learning where respect is enforced. We also have a space for technical support. In the technical support space, this is where you can post, you know, any challenge that you encounter when taking the course. This is the space where you also get to know at what time to contact the team at, at Waxi. You know, it's important to know that it's not any hour that you post that you are going to receive an immediate feedback. There are specific days that those challenges are going to address. And it's also possible to send an email to the Waxi team at capacitybuilding at waxi.org to receive you know, specific guidelines if you are encountering a challenges. There will also be live session. Why? Because it's important that as you are taking the course as a, at a self-paced race, that you are also able 
to engage with other participants who are in the course in a lively way so that you can get to know other people who are taking the course, ask your question lively and receive lively feedback. So this is the space where any update concerning that will be shared. There's also a space for participant expectation and certificate. Many of us today in this launch uh, session, we have asked, what should we do to have the certificate? And as Leandro, as Leandro has indicated, you need to pay $20 to get the certificate, but the fee is not a requirement for you to start or to take the course. So what does it mean? It means that the access to the course is free. You can take the course from the beginning till the end without paying a pesewa. But in case you need a certificate as a proof of you taking the course, then you may have to spend $20. I hope that is clear. But having access to the course, benefiting from the session, everything is entirely free. So these are the key conditions. You have to complete all the modules. You have to engage by posting. And you also have to ensure that you submit the final assignment. All the instructions are clear. And we are also going to upload a sample of how the certificate will look like. There was a question from uh, one lady from Nigeria who was asking the value of the certificate. Indeed, it's true that the certificate has value when it is you know, accredited by an academic institution, but Waxi also on its own is already recognized in the civic space globally as a lead capacity development institution. And also we all know that skills are better demonstrated than declared. So the course is of great value. You can add a certificate to your CV. You can post it on LinkedIn and everywhere where you find it necessary. And Waxi is willing to, uh, like to confirm whenever an employer is having doubt in case we are reached out to. Now let's move to the syllabus. The syllabus here is basically what presents the overall structure of the course, you know, how everything has been organized. So for this, I've already opened that somewhere here, the syllabus. So I'm going to show you, this is the syllabus. So the syllabus, it's a PDF document. You can download it on your phone, on your laptop. It basically contains the course description, the learning outcome, what you are required to read, you know, the percentage for grading, the recommended grading, everything that you need to know is here. And also rules about plagiarism. We want to be sure that all of those who are receiving the certificate are not cheating. You know, doing course online, there are a lot of online resources and we may be tempted of cheating when doing the exercises. That's why we are ensuring that our participants abide by, by, by the rules of integrity. So here, uh, basically you see the course requirement, it is open to everyone as far as you have the willingness and the time to learn, you can start the course. We have, in each course, we have the live session, 30 minutes, as we have indicated. We have the quiz for each module. We have a final exam at the end of the entire 12 modules. And in the presentation, you know, each one of you is going to share, this is for the final exam, is to share a five to 10 minute video presentation or to develop a blog article which present the lesson that you have learned in the course. In the learning forum, learning forum, you will see it on the platform. There are space where you can engage with other participants. And we have learning forum for each module. So this is a space where you can engage, you know, with other participants, discuss with them and all of that. How is the course graded? We have weekly quizzes. The weekly quizzes are coming at the end of each module. Let's remember, as I indicated in the beginning, that we have one module per week. So at the end of each module, you take an assessment quiz, which basically validates what you have learned. And it accounts for 30% of the overall grade. We also have participation in the learning forum. The learning forum here are space where you engage with other participants. So you have to post and to also reply to posts from other participants. This is to ensure that we have a dynamic and interactive community online. We have the final exam, you know, which will focus on how you plan to implement. Let's remember, this is a practical oriented online session, online course. So we want to be sure that at the end of the course, you have a kind of resource mobilization plan or a specific way that you plan to apply what you have learned because 
knowledge is good, but knowledge without application is useless. So we want to make sure that in the final exam, you clearly state how you plan to go about that. And you also have the oral or written presentation. That's what we have indicated in the beginning. So you either record a video where you explain how you are going to go about the implementation, or you will do it in the uh, 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 Zoom meeting where you are going to explain what you plan to do. And participation and attendance to the live session is also 10%. As you will notice, the grading is to ensure that the course is as participative as possible and that people don't just come. We are not getting you, please. Yes, I think uh, maybe internet connection, we lost him. Kevin. Okay, I think I think due to internet connections. So yes. that's if you yeah, sorry. Uh, we are, yeah, sorry. We had an okay. internet internet interruption here. I'm going to project back again. Uh, we are in Africa, and it can happen. So basically, recommended readings. Here we have Natasha Goldlinskin, five tips to consider before you become a nonprofit consultant, and many others. So this is a way to focus on this. We have two types of reading in the course. We have recommended readings, which are reading that are directly connected to the topic of the module and we have optional reading which are complementary but not obligatory reading so this is for those who want to further advance their knowledge about the issue so basically i will not go over all of them in the course in the course uh, 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 syllabus you are going to see all the modules all the elements that you are going to find on the platform so this will basically guide you to know what to expect and you also have the link to the pdf you can click on them and all of that why have we added the pdf one participant i think from nigeria also asked about the issue of connectivity we have noticed how just now the internet went off you know for for a while and we know that this can be an issue for many of us who are attending the course so that's why we ensure that all the resources that are on the platform are also accessible offline so any course, anything that you see online, you also see the PDF version. And if you click, it's going to lead you onto the PDF version of the document. I'll just click here. Okay. So basically, that's something that we have done to ensure that participants have access to all the elements, both online and offline. Now, there is also one element I want to highlight here, which is about, you know, Waxy Creed. Our work secret here is the basic principle for the course. The first one is commitment to learn. Second, ready to honor both other participants who are engaging with you. We are equipped to engage by participating. We are eager to grow and to, you know, and to share, and we are determined to finish. Starting is well, but finishing is better. So here we have the final grade. Depending, this is what you are going to see on, on your certificate depending on the on the rate that you will have you are either going to have a c plus or a plus and play, this is our plagiarism and cheating policy that we highly recommend all of us to read now let's go back to the course and look at some of the key feature that you can expect on it so after the announcement after the announcement, you will see the course and community guidelines. I've explained all of this, the, the course syllabus. Now, after that, you are going to start with the induction. In the induction, you are going to see the background. The induction will basically take you through all the background of the course, what has been, uh, uh, what are the elements that have informed the design of the course, you know. Then you have the course instructor. About the course instructor, here you basically say about Waxi, those who are going to interact with you on the course. They are basically Mr. Charles Kojo Van Dyke, Mr. Jim Formunjong, and Mr. Leandre 
but no. So these are the course instructor. You're also going to have a session where you can introduce yourself. Introducing yourself will help people to know who you are, what you are doing, and how to connect with you. You also have a, a, a space that will in, that will, that, that's going to explain you how you can work in groups. We want to foster community learning, you know, peer learning. And this is going to answer that. We also have a space for frequently asked questions. This is very essential. I'm going to go through it briefly. So the space for frequently asked questions is basically some of the questions that you may have about the course, such as, you know, are there scheduled lecture? When should I complete my assignment? You know, as the course is self-paced and it is online, you are free to take it at your own pace. Just make sure that you complete it within the 12 months that it is going to be online. How much time do you need? Averagely, you know, you will need three hours to complete one module if you want to take it well properly all through the week. You know, can I see all, like basically any course, any question that you may have about the course, you can find it here. And if there is any question that you have that is not listed here, you can go in the technical session and ask it to the team and we'll be glad to provide answers to that. The next element we want to focus on is basically uh, the pre-course survey. So we have a space for pre-course survey where you are going to be assessed what is your level of understanding of alternative funding source before starting the course. It's very essential so that at the end, when you take the post-course survey, it's going to help us to assess you know, how well or how much you have learned by taking the course. So we highly encourage everyone to take the pre-course survey. And here we have all the modules, as I've said. Each module will last for one week. At the beginning of each module, you will have a pre-assessment. The pre-assessment will help, will help to assess your understanding of that module. So for example, the pre-assessment of consultancy service will be asking questions about consultancy service to, to go to your level of understanding. And then you will have a page Introduction to consultancy and so many other so many other things. Introduction, you will have a written text and all of that. After the introduction, you will have uh, 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 a space to watch the video. You know, the space to watch the video. The video will basically explain. It is an animated video that will explain what consultancy service consists of. You know, what is it needed, how which type of CSO are able to provide consultancy. Let's start with this short one, just for demonstration. You can advance the course and so many other things. So this is basically one video. So here also, you have a recommended video. The recommended video is a video that you must watch because the quiz of the, the weekly quiz, some of the questions of the weekly quiz are drawn from the video, which means that if you do not watch the recommended video, there are some questions of the quiz that you may fail. So it's highly recommended for you to follow it. But we also have an op optional video. The optional video is not are like uh, 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 recommended in the sense that you take it is like an additional video to provide more light over the topic of the week. And we have the PDF of the video. So this video, if you click here, you are going to download the PDF of that video. After the video, you have the case study as I've indicated. So in the case study, you are going to read about organizations who have actually applied this alternative funding model what they have learned from it. So we have here the case study from Association Burkina Faso Fundraising in Burkina Faso. The PDF is there. You also have that for the Cameroon Debate Association. And at the end, you have reflective questions. They are questions about what you have learned, you know, in this case study. After the case study, you have reading. In the reading, they are basically documents, as we have indicated, to complement what you can learn. And you have recommended resources and optional resources. And after, after taking the reading, then you move to the quiz, you know, to the quiz. The quiz is time bound. There is a time limit you have to, 
uh, ensure that you also complete it. It is one hour to complete it. To pass the quiz, you need to get at least 70% of the mark and you have two attempts. So you can take the quiz twice. And at the end of the two attempts, the platform is going to select the highest grade that you had after the two attempts. And that's what is going to be kept. And at the end of the, the quiz, you have what we call a learning forum. The learning forum is where, you know, we provide you with, you know, a practical way of applying what you have learned, you know, and if you go through it, you reflect to it and you answer, you compile your answer into a document and you share it. And at the end of that, we have a feedback module. The feedback module basically, you know, pre uh, uh, present you, you know, the opportunity of assessing what you have learned. Do you have any challenge going through the course? You know, do you have anything that you want to add and all of that? So as you have realized, we ensure that every module is inclusive, is participatory, and is also taking into account your own feedback, your own experiences. And we envision that at the end of every session, you know, each, each session is going to last for three months, 12 weeks equal to, 12, uh, to three months. So averagely in the year, we envision having three sessions, you know, three sessions with one month break after each session so that we can integrate the feedback from the participant into the course. So this feedback from the module one is the space where if there is any concern that you have about the module, you have the opportunity of sharing that here. So this is basically the same structure for each module. So in each module, you have an introduction, you have a video, you have a case study, you have the reading, you have the quiz, Please, those who are not speaking, kindly mute your kindly mute your mic, please. Please, those. Okay, you you have the quiz, you have the learning forum, and you have the feedback for the module. Same thing for module three on event organization, membership, social enterprise model, the microfinance model, the subsidiary profit model, the incubation model. The, more, the private sector model, the social and green bonds, the crowdfunding, and the fiscal, the fiscal sponsorship. So that is the same structure. I'm not going to go over all of it because it's basically the same element but with different content. So at the end of all the modules, you have things that, please, uh, some of us uh, 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 have their mic open, please. Please mute your microphone. Please, please, please let's mute our mute. speaker too. Speak. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Javin. So at the end, you have work, work series publication. So if you click on this link, it's going to bring you to work series, work series publication. As we all know, WACSI is a knowledge app for knowledge and resources on civil society strengthening. So clicking here will allow you to have access to those resources. We also have our privacy and data protection policy to ensure that every information that you put on the platform, you will know how it's going to be handled. We also have a guideline and structure for success story writing. As you are taking the course and you implement what you are learning from it, we believe that you, know, you may want to share your success story. So this link will basically help you to know how to go about, how, how to go about it you know, how to write a success story, you know, in the introduction, the body, the conclusion, because you will need to do this in order to do some of the assignment on the, on the platform. And finally, uh, uh, we, are, we are explaining how you can access the course on your mobile, on your mobile platform, you know. So uh, 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 when designing the course, I ensure that, you know, you can access it on your mobile phone, either Android, either uh, 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 a... How do you call it? iPhone, either Android iPhone. phone or, yes, or iPhone. So this is the link that you can click and there are specific guidelines, step-by-step -step guidelines that you can take in order to access the platform on your mobile device, what to expect on it and how also you can have access to it on the mobile desktop app and there's a link for you to download, to download it. So this is basically the key information that you need to take the course, you know, and uh, there, there is much more, but I will stop here so that if there is any 
question that you may have about the cost, the element that we have took into consideration when designing it or any other thing that you would like to further and lay emphasis on, this is your time to ask those questions and I'm here to answer them. Thank you. Thank you, Christian, for that comprehensive call of the platform. We have a number of people that have raised their hands. So please, we, we encourage that when you mount the platform, you just quickly summarize your points so that we can close early. Um, so our first, um, the first person I'd like to call is Mr. N.S. Pei. Please, Mr. Mr. Tay, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Uh, and thanks for the presentation on the course. Certainly a great course that each one of us must go through. And uh, I get a point that it's a 12 month course, but um, at the end of the 12 months, uh, those of us who may not have had the opportunity to take it, can we have the opportunity the next 12 months? All right, thank yes. you. The course will be running, that's what I mean. Yes, so just Christian, quick, maybe just we can quickly quick, take another question. Two okay. more questions before, okay. so that you can go. All right, great. So we have, we have, please mute your microphone if you are not speaking, if you are not on the floor. And we have Mr. Adibayo Babatunde. Please, you have the floor, Mr. Babatunde. All right, um, so let's move to Augustine. Augustine, please, you have the floor. Yeah, can you get me? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Right Maybe you shared the information before, but I just joined. I want to know how to enroll and what's the fee we have to pay to take the course. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So Christian, over to you. Okay, so uh, the course is free. Free is at the level of the access. You can, act, you can have access to the course anytime, anywhere. You can do the modules, everything, learn everything, download everything at your own pace during the three months. Three months, not 12 months, as Leandro has specified in the chat. It is 12 weeks, so we have 12 modules. So one module per week. So, so it makes three months. Number two, um, the certificate, yes, you can have the certificate if you want. And for that, you pay a $20, you know, a $20 to get it. I hope that's clear, please. Okay, it's clear. I hope you will share the link to, to enroll in the course with, with people. Yes, please, please. Check, please check the chat box. The link will be sent there. Yeah, do you have a floor? I'm sharing Thank the you. link again. Sure. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chris and Jevins. I just want to clarify this point. To say that, I mean, it's 12 weeks, as Chris indicated again, there is two ways to take the course. You can take it as individual anytime you want. You can even start today if you want at your own pace. However, there is also group learning. And those who are part of the group learning will benefit for, for the live session that Christian has mentioned. So we'll be having weekly live session, like 10, 10 minutes to 30 minutes, basically, for participants to raise any issue that they have encountered while going through the platform for us to address it. And we will be organizing two group learning per year. So this year, we are already at the half of the year. So we are going to have only one group learning. And the group learning is starting on 5th September. We will be communicating around that on various platforms. So if you want to join the group learning, which is also most effective because you have people pulling you along. But especially when you are doing it alone online, sometimes there is, I mean, especially when it's long 12 weeks, you can, I mean, lose momentum easily. But when you are in group chatting, forum, engaging each other, you can pull each other along. So the group, the first group and the only group for this year is starting on 5th, September and will be ending by the first week of December, actually the last week of November. So that will be for the first group for this year. Next year, we are planning for two groups. So we're having two learning groups per year and we will communicate around that. 
I mean, give you a specific date. So for all of you here, if you want to join the group, kindly register and be ready by 5th September to join the live group sessions. Thank you. But if you want to do as individual, you can start even today at your own pace. No problem about that. Thank you. Jevin, over. All right. Um, thank you. Please, we'll take two more questions and then we'll draw down the curtains for the program. Two more questions. You can either raise your hand to speak or you post your question in the chat box. Hello. Yes, hi. Yeah, if nobody is talking, let me take the floor. Please, you have the floor. Uh, this is Christopher, Hello. thank you so much. I'm impressed with uh, all these models. And I just want to encourage my that uh, it's a very good one. Uh, sometimes people think that when something is free, it has no value. But I want to attest to them that uh, having gone through WAXI program, similar to some of these things, it has helped me and my organization a lot. This is Christopher Dapa, Resource Link Foundation. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Christopher, for that uh, testimony to the work of the Institute. We are happy to hear that. And um, we have Emily. Emily, for food delay, please, you have the floor. Thank you so much, Waxi. Um, I'm just going to be quick to ask, and thank you for this platform for us who are kind of a new organization. This is very impact, will be very impactful for us. I just want to ask um, if I want to start individually and also be part of the group. Um, learning is that also possible if i want to start now and also join the group i just want to know so it helps me know when to start thank you thank you um christian over to you uh yes uh mrs emily of Odile, the course is possible to be taken alone as an individual and also as a team you you remember uh, maybe I have to project it in the presentation. I there were guidelines on how to take it as a team. In the guidelines, I included some tools that can facilitate group learning. You know, community learning like Zoom. You know, and many other tools that you can use to learn together with other mem member of the same organization or from a different organization, so that you submit assignment together. You know, it's possible. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right. So, um, I think we'll draw the curtains now all too soon. Our time is up. Um, we want to thank each and every one of you for being part of this historic day. We want to thank our guest speakers. We also want to thank our funders, Velda Hansen and Innovation for Change, for making this possible. We want to thank each and every one of you. Um, as Leon mentioned, we hope that each and one and every one of you will be an ambassador of the platform. Please go and propagate the gospel of alternative funding models. And we hope to see you use the platform to build your sustainability, to become more resilient, and to continue responding to the needs of our community. So on this note, we want to wish you well. Do have a pleasant day. And we hope that the next time we have another webinar, you make a date with us. Thank you. It was a pleasure to have you for this all-important occasion. Have a nice day. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye.